This is a Galaxy Note 8 charge port connector. As you can see, it got a little smashed there. And this is a pretty good place to start if you haven't done this type of connector before because there's quite a bit of room in here. So what I'm going to do is start by just kind of taping down the surrounding area. If you're very careful, you can probably get away without this. But just to be safe, I like to get a little bit of this gold tape over the surrounding components. That way, if you get a little too much airflow, you don't blow anything off of the board. I've got my hot air set to the exact same temperature that I use if I'm working on anything like an iPhone motherboard. So uh, depending on your hot air station, this will vary of course, but I am at 430 degrees Celsius and 30 liters per minute airflow with a six millimeter nozzle. And I, after I heat the board up here, we're going to go ahead and add some flux. And then if you just kind of keep the heat on here constant, it won't take too long before this comes off. The trick is going to be that you need both ends, uh, the right end and the left end, to heat up because the anchors on this are going to be the thing that kind of hold it in place. So as you see the solder liquefy, just keep an eye on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the right hand here a bit first. And uh, sorry, I know the, the view is obscured here for the moment. But uh, momentarily, you'll be able to see that as we move this off, if you're very careful, you can actually get this off in one piece. It'll slide right across the board. Just make sure you have all those pins disconnected. And that uh, at that point, you can take your old part off. And we'll get the old solder removed from here, clean this up, and then get our new port installed, or our new connector installed. All right, we'll put some fresh flux down and then we're going to add leaded solder to all of the points that you see here. And we just want to make sure we have nice even coverage on all these contacts, uh, no bridges, and you want to make sure that those two points on either end don't have so much solder built up that it kind of raises your connector because we do need to, it to be close to the motherboard. All right, so I'm going to heat this up a little bit. One of the hardest things about this was actually getting the connector out of the package. All right, so we're going to set this down as close as we possibly can to where we want it to end up. And if your flux is a little sticky, just go ahead and warm it up. And once it liquefies, you should be able to maneuver this a little more accurately. And that's right about where we want to be. So if you come in with just low airflow here, um, it shouldn't blow out of position too much. And when it does move a little bit, you can just tap it on the edge on either side. Make sure not to touch the plastic part because it's easy to poke a hole through when it's at this temperature. But you'll see you can just kind of move this around until it sets straight. And that's also going to help to make sure all of these points are connecting on the board.
Now it looks like we've got everything lined up pretty close to where it was originally. And I'm just going to check these pins quickly, make sure none of them are completely disconnected. And what will typically happen is the solder gets sucked up underneath the connector. So they are on the motherboard, but you can't really see a lot of that solder that we put down earlier. So just to reinforce this, we're going to go ahead and add a little more flux and then touch up each one of these pins individually. I'm not going to worry about these looking perfect. I just want to make sure that we have solder on every connector. We'll go back with some hot air later on and just kind of reflow them. All right, so you can see I'm applying a little more hot air, and this will smooth out all those little jagged pieces, especially on the ground connectors where you have a hard time getting those things to melt. Now if you finish up and it looks like you've got a pin or two that don't quite have as much, uh, as good of a joint as the others, you can just apply that process again, but specifically to the pins that need it. And you can see that one that I was just pointing to it is connected, it doesn't move, but it's not really got a solid solder joint underneath it, so we're just going to go ahead and touch that up. Now you'll probably have to use a combination of soldering iron and hot air on these ground pins because they do take quite a bit of heat before they flow. So as you can see, I'm just warming up the board. We'll go in and touch this real quick. And we'll make a nice solid connection there. Flow it out till it's smooth. And there you go. And that is looking pretty close to factory right there.